I've been doing these Higher Things video shorts for a few weeks now, and it just occurred to me that I don't really know you. Sorry about that. I, I wish I did, but I suppose there's a few things that I can assume about you. For example, I can assume that if you're a teenager, you probably don't think much about what you eat. And, and I probably mean that on a couple of different levels, but mostly I'm talking about the fact that around 5 p.m. every evening, you're probably thinking to yourself, what's for dinner? You're probably not thinking about going to the grocery store and buying those things for dinner. You're probably not thinking about cooking those things for yourself for dinner because you've probably got somebody at home who takes care of that sort of thing for you. So they're the ones who have gone to the grocery store. They're the ones who have picked up all the items that are needed. They're the ones who prepared the meal. And they're the ones who are going to serve it to you. And you're the one who's going to eat it in theory, right? Hopefully you've grown less picky in your teenage years than you were when you were four. Anyway, for the most part, I can assume that you trust those people. You trust that they will take care of you. You trust that they're going to give you something good to eat, in theory anyway, right? You might not like it, but even if you don't like it, you realize that this is something for your good. This is something to nourish your body, to help you grow physically. And Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 2, that we need the same thing for our spiritual lives. We need to be fed and nourished. And that's why Peter says, like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Have you tasted that the Lord is good? Well, Peter says a little bit later in chapter two, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So if you've received that mercy of God, then you have tasted that the Lord is good. And he certainly has given you a lot of nourishment for your soul. I mean, first of all, he has put people in your lives, like your parents or your grandparents or your friends or your teachers or pastors to proclaim the truth of God's word to you. Of course, none of these people would really know what the truth was if God himself hadn't revealed it, but he did. He sent his prophets to prepare God's people for the coming Christ. He sent his own son to show us the way to salvation. And not as an example sort of thing, like Jesus said, follow me and you too can be holy, but rather in a, I'm going to do this for you because you can't do it for yourself sort of way. Jesus is the one who, in great humility, came to be a man, died upon the cross, resurrected from the dead, and brings us into communion with our Creator. So it would be foolish for us, wouldn't it, to ignore that word of God? It would be foolish for us to reject the nourishment that God provides for us. It would be foolish to fill ourselves up with the spiritual equivalent of lucky charms. I made that mistake, physically speaking, when I was in college. My mother was no longer there to, to make sure that I had good things to eat, but the cafeteria seemed to have an endless supply of Lucky Charms, so I had Lucky Charms for breakfast every day, and I suppose that's not so bad, but I also had Lucky Charms for lunch, and I usually had Lucky Charms for dinner, too. I mean, sometimes it wasn't the main course. It was a side dish or maybe a dessert, but still, my body craved Lucky Charms. They were good but it really wasn't good for my body to fill up on that fluffy sugar. So in our sinfulness, it's kind of the same way. We crave those things that aren't good for us sinfully. But thanks be to God that Christ has rescued us from those things. Thanks be to God that he has nourished us with the pure spiritual milk of his gospel. Thanks be to God that he has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You have been united with Christ through baptism. You have been fed by Christ and nourished by him when you take the Lord's Supper. The very body and blood of Christ comes into your body to strengthen your faith and to sustain you. You are encouraged in the faith and upheld by the truthfulness of his word through the work of the Holy Spirit in his church, in your hearing, in your reading, and in your studying of the scriptures. Thanks be to God that he has fed us with this truth.